This is Twit. Oh, this was a huge story in the New York Times this weekend. <laughs> and I think it's hysterical. Uh, apparently, OpenAI decided that they needed more training information. This is going to be the gold rush mm -hmm. going forward with AIs. They, uh, they, they already ate the entire internet. We need more! So uh, OpenAI in 2021 said, you know what? There's all this great stuff on YouTube. They created a tool, which I use to this day, called Whisper. It's a great transcription tool. They created it specifically to transcribe audio from YouTube videos so that they can use it to train their AI. The New York Times... Let's hope they didn't use it on any uh, Disney properties. Uh, well, <laughs> let me read on. Cade Metz, <laughs> Cecilia Kang, uh -huh. Shira Frankel, Stuart A. Thompson, and Nico Grant writing for the New York Times. Oh, that's a murderous row of great tools. I, I know. Holy cow! Some open AI employees discussed how such a move might go against YouTube's rules. Three people with knowledge of the conversation said, YouTube which is owned by Google, prohibits use of its videos for applications that are independent of the video platform. Ultimately, they said, I'll oh, screw it. And they went ahead and did it, transcribing more than a million hours of YouTube videos. Get them, Disney. The team included Greg Brockman, OpenAI's president, who personally helped collect the videos. The texts were then fed into GPT-4, which is the current state-of-the-art OpenAI and probably, really, the benchmark for everybody making an LLM. I, I did not have Justine Bateman speaking out on the ethics of OpenAI on my bingo card. <laughs> but uh, if you did, congratulations. You've did, just did filled she, in your square. Did she say? Justine Bateman, filmmaker, former actress, and author of two books, told the Copyright Office that AI models were taking content, including her writing in films, without permission or payment. This That's is the largest theft in the United States period, she said no, in an interview. No. This is the debate, of course. Love that she's bringing this up. There uh, in fact, Kathy Gellis, who's been on our shows many times, uh, is an attorney, mm -hmm. uh, an expert in intellectual property, says that is part of the free speech. It's not just the right to speak, but the right to read. Yeah. Now, the question is, humans have the right to read. You have a right to read Justine Bateman's book. You yeah. even have the right to memorize it and repeat it back to me. Uh, is an AI different? Is open AI different? And right now, it's unclear. The courts have generally supported AI's right mm. to do this now. That is violating Google's policy. <laughs> so <laughs> last year, Meta uh, apparently discussed buying Simon & Schuster just to get their library of books. You read Kara... Um, Swisher? Swisher's latest book, right? No, of course not. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> hmm, not a fan. Oh. No. Tell me about it. So I did not you know can, that. Uh, you read it? Uh, you uh, legal, you legally I, I, read a copy? I you can now tell me about yeah. it without in any way violating her, her intellectual property rights. Yeah, I, I didn't realize that. Oh, I, you know, there was, there was, I, that's a long story. So the myth that she builds of herself over the course of the That's book, my problem. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the myth that she builds is that she was the visionary who saw that everything that can be digitized yeah. will be digitized. And this is a theme that she brings up repeatedly in her book, but um, I'll, I'll say that looking to buy a publisher just so you have access you to go, its corpus huh? certainly doesn't do much to disprove. Now, I should mention yeah. that Google broadened its terms of service mm -hmm. so that it could tap publicly available Google Docs, restaurant reviews, and Google Maps. I think Google may also be doing, oh yes, Google transcribed YouTube videos. Yeah to harvest text for its AI models, according to five people with knowledge of the company's Wait, practices. Wait, what I love is the thought that the reason why we actually have transcriptions built into YouTube is not because it was a good no. and great thing to, <laughs> to train the release, AIs, baby. release to the public, but it was because it was so it could train its AI yep. Accessibility, schmeccessibility. Yeah, exactly. It's all about our dumb robot overlords. I am, though, I think I'm a maybe uh, that is wild. contrarian yeah. in all this, yeah. but I really think AI should be allowed to read everything. The, yeah. the last thing you want is an AI that's trained only on public domain information. <sighs> if you can read Kara's book, the AI should be allowed to read Kara's book. The biggest problem you have with AI is data quality, period. Right. And so this how do you is get something that we're not. Well, I think you have a lot of AI startups that are somehow assuming the data will, will will create itself in a time when we're gutting the content industry, in a time when we're gutting well, basic it's research. A race. It's a race between yeah. the collapse of the content industry and the AIs. <clears throat> and if the AIs could just read everything before all of us writers and creators Get 
driven out of get business out of by, business. by the bots that are now writing the SEO glurge. Yeah. Well, and this is one of the problems with AI right now is that there is such a dearth of information. They're proposing yeah. that they train on other AI's creations. Oof. But no, no, because you still idea. don't have a really good model for that. You've got a problem. I, I believe somebody called it the Habsburg data model, where eventually it just gets so iteratively bad that a couple iterations into training, it bears no resemblance to the original data set. They all get the bleeders what you were trying to do. Yeah. 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 The idea of that these great publishers um, yeah. with long histories could end up being most valuable essentially by providing chum to large tech companies is incredibly depressing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, now, remember, the, the Times does have a dog in this fight. They sued True. OpenAI because yeah. they felt that uh, OpenAI was using copyrighted news articles. I think it's going to be very interesting to see what the courts say, because you can make a fair use argument. Uh, and that these AIs are doing nothing different than a, than a human would do to read this content. Yeah. Uh, and, and as Kathy's pointed out, there is a risk if courts rule against this of infringing, in fact, the right to read for humans as well. Because right. wouldn't copyright holders like that? Yeah. They'd love to shut down libraries because you didn't pay for that book. Yeah. Um, I, more than 10,000 trade groups, authors, companies, Justine Bateman. Yeah. <laughs> I just want to know if, if someone in Disney's legal office, if there's like some poor intern who's who's been assigned to like chat somebody up mm -hmm. at, at OpenAI to see any of the videos trained on Wait. are... Marvel trailers, maybe? Chat somebody up implies it's sort of like this undercover thing where they're getting to know them. Yeah, they start a relationship. Hey, how's okay, it going? that's what you mean by chat somebody up. Hey, AI... you wouldn't happen to have used any Disney movie <laughs> trailers when training your AI, did you? <laughs> if AI were to. I mean, it may be that AI is worthless. It may be AI is the new you, right? It's going to be on the cover of every magazine and then it turns out to be another AI winner. But if it is going to be what it could be, it's going to only be that if it can ingest as much information as possible. And I think there is a chance, maybe not a lot, but there is a chance that AI could create the next cure for cancer, that AI could, mm -hmm. could solve hereditary childhood diseases, that AI could solve a lot of problems if it's given enough information. I'd like I to think push back on the benefit. phrasing that you have AI could solve this because what AI is, it's neither artificial nor intelligence. It's just a way to do large scale pattern matching and large scale pattern extrapolation based on previous <laughs> data. But what AI could do is working in conjunction with researchers who know how to identify and frame a problem, it could help by, by saying, we will crunch all this data that we have and see if we can find something that comes out of it. Um, the same way that... Uh, AI is actually generating new info. This is what's really interesting to me. Yeah. This is something that is a new era in uh -huh. AI, which is it's generative. It isn't just regurgitating existing <laughs> stuff. One of the things AI is doing, for instance, is protein folding. Remember what you yeah. folding at home mm -hmm. where we were all supposed to devote our computers spare cycles to protein folding? AI has done more in just a few months with protein folding than we did in many years of AI uh, at home or folding at home. It is literally generating new useful information based on a corpus of existing information and a well, set like of Well, like my point rules. exactly, you got to train it. Yeah. Right, but it can become generative saying, well, if it's properly trained. And most of the AI breakthroughs of the last few years have come from the unbelievable, unbelievably vast amounts of data that have been force-fed to them. Right, mm -hmm. and so, so if there are more breakthroughs, they may come from even more data. I think there is um, a societal benefit. Mm -hmm. Isn't that the whole point of uh, fair use? And, and uh, in fact, the whole point of patent and copyright law from to begin with was. You have to, at some point, give up your patent or give up your copyright for the greater good of society. Wasn't that a big argument when they were sequencing the human the human genome? Like yeah. I remember Craig Ventner being like, I'm going to copyright the human genome. He did. He tried genome. to copyright it. Yeah. yeah. No. I actually interviewed him at the time. And he's like, I found it. It's mine. <laughs> yeah, it's ours. I hate to tell you, yeah. Craig. Yeah. Um, so... Copyright is not in our interest, is what I'm saying. Yeah. And copyright, if it prevents an AI from becoming all it can be probably is not in our interest. And yeah. so I think that maybe this, I mean, I'm, I know I'm a contrarian here, but I think we should, I think too bad, Google. Uh, 
let the AI read all your videos mm -hmm. and, and not just open AI, but every AI. That's the thing, right? Is it just one company that's becoming incredibly powerful that's doing it versus if we're allowing every Well, I'm AI a big believer in open and source yeah, AI. That's, I completely agree with you. Whenever yeah. we put that that note in there, then I'm 100% on board. So when you say big believer in open source AI, that, does that also extend to like the data sets that would go into training it? No, I think they yeah. should steal everything they possibly can get. <laughs> okay. And then yeah. the trained sets should be given to us yeah. to do whatever we want to do with it. There's a call very it stealing. It's, is it theft? That's reading, the argument, right? Reading. Yeah. It's yeah. reading. You read Kara Swisher's book. You just told me about yeah. it. Yep. I didn't have to read it. Yeah. This whole show... Is it's us all from reading regurgitating articles. articles. Yeah. That's all we do. Now, I try to credit them, but yeah. I don't pay them. I, I would I would also dispute the notion of the term regurgitate because we're adding extra context. Value. Yeah. We are um, assessing and synthesizing different pieces of information to come to a new insight. Ge it's, that's the whole just, key. It's yeah. generative. There is, you know, I think there's no doubt that their AI is useful in synopsizing existing information. I use it all the time to do that. Mm -hmm. It's really, really, yeah. really useful. Yeah. So even if it just does that, that's great. Mm -hmm. But I think if we can get to generative, maybe not AGI, but generative AI, and I think mm -hmm. we're getting there, where it comes up with new stuff that it has come up with, that's incredibly valuable yeah. and a societal benefit. So, uh, you know, these companies spend a lot of money yeah. on electricity and processors to train. Yeah, that's an environmental thing. <laughs> yeah. Well, if we're going to have a solution to climate yeah. change, it might have to come from an AI. I have bad news for you. Paradox. <laughs> <laughs> it might happen. Yeah, yeah, which will happen first. Yeah. yeah. Hey, thank you for watching this little snippet from our big show, The News Roundtable, This Week in Tech. I'm Leo Laporte. Each week we cover the week's tech news, in-depth analysis, but it's also fun and engaging. You'll find it at twit.tv along with all of our shows. And if you want more, just hit the subscribe button and uh, we'll be sure to bring you a lot more great content. Thanks for listening.